there, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Get Your Ass Up and Move Fitness and Nutrition Podcast. I am your host, Peter Gay Barrett with Barrett Fitness. And on this podcast, we discuss fitness, nutrition, overall health, and overall well-being. We have another amazing guest with us today. We have Miss Gabby Villa from Australia. Hi, Gabby. Hi, Peter. Thank you for having me here. I'm very excited to have this chat. Awesome. I am excited to have this chat with you. It is currently 8 p.m. my time in North America. And what um, you're in Australia. What time is it there? It's 8 a.m. over here. Awesome. Awesome. So I love this connection that we have going on here. But today, um, Gabby will be joining us to talk about um, sports nutrition. Um, Gabby, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you're a sports nutritionist. You um, focus on, I guess, sports nutrition for a certain um, type of athletes. But just go ahead and tell us a little bit about where you're from and just a little introduction about yourself. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm Gabby. I'm I'm actually Mexican, but I'm living in Australia. I've been living here for more than five years already. And I'm a sports nutritionist. I specialize in optimizing performance for triathletes and ultra distance runners by making food their best ally in a sport and life. This is something I've been doing for more than nine years. I've been part of the, um, uh, I guess, involved in the sports nutrition world since like, for a, like a very young age because I've like, I've always been so passionate about the sports. I think being uh, involved in so many sports since I was little is what like essentially was t taking me towards uh, working on um, in, in the sport as well. Like being, being involved with athletes was something that I was very um, aware that was something I really wanted to do. Right. And right now, because I think also because I am a triathlete and I'm more involved in the endurance sport is what took me towards focusing more on endurance nutrition. And that's why I mostly work with triathletes and, oh, okay. and runners predominantly. So did you say you are a triathlete yourself? Yes, I am. Oh my God, that is so cool. So I didn't know that when we last spoke. I don't know how I, how I missed that one. Good for you, girl. So let's talk a little bit about that. How did you get into triathlon? Like at what age did you, you know, start becoming interested in it? Were your parents involved in, you know, running or, you know, cycling or anything like that? How did you get involved and at what age? Yeah, so I actually was doing swimming for a, a few years. I didn't get to a very like competitive like uh, level, but I, I was at the state level with uh, in a team. And my cousin, who was also a swimmer, came across a triathlon event that was happening in my uh, hometown. It's called Saltillo. And she thought it was a good idea to organize a relay with the family because we have runners and dad was doing a bit of cycling. So we put several relays, I think, among the whole, because it's a big family, we ended up getting like four relay teams. Right. And I did the swimming. I remember dad was doing the, the, the bike and then I had an uncle doing the run but it felt so exciting i i didn't know this sport existed before that i so i how old were you I idea about triathlon. how old were you i was then? probably 14 years old or even younger wow so after that event i decided that the next year because we didn't have that many i was like okay next year i'm going to do it on my own so my preparation for it was essentially two weeks before the event. I was like jumping on the bike to make sure I, I would be ready for it. Like that. <laughs> exactly, just two weeks. And yeah, I remember crossing that finish line, feeling like I was an Iron Man. It was such a short triathlon, but for me, it was such a huge accomplishment. I just, I fell in love with the sport. I love it so much. And since then, I decided that's what I wanted to keep doing. So of the three, which which do you prefer? Or you know, I, I, I would imagine that most triathletes have one event that they're either better at or more passionate about. Which one is that for you? Ah, I think it's been changing throughout the years because since I started as a swimmer, I was happy that often I would get out of the water quite like early, uh, right. and then the bike became quite strong, and now is the the run that I'm enjoying a lot. So I feel like. I actually enjoy all three of them. I find that each of them have their like their own special thing and 
I guess is the combination of all that that I truly enjoy and the ability to have that flexibility. I really wow. like that you can swim one day and you run the other and then you go cycling. So you never get bored. Right, right, right. That is very cool. So, so let's talk about the nutrition aspect of it, being that you are a sports nutritionist and your focus is how to optimize the performance of these triathletes and um, ultra you know, runners with food, right? So how did you get into the nutrition aspect of it? Like, how did that start for you? Uh, so it was because I wanted to be part of this, like involved in the sport somehow. And I also, I wasn't sure I wanted to be a coach. And then I came across the degree of dietetics essentially. Mm -hmm. And there was a component in that one that I was doing that I was talking about exercise and health. So I was like, oh, I can link the both. I can work on like the part of nutrition and exercise. So that's how I became aware of, of the opportunity to, to be involved in, in the sport from a different perspective, some right. sort of like from supporting uh, with the food as well. Mm -hmm. And from there I was, okay, I did dietetics and straight away I went to complete a diploma in sports nutrition with the International Olympic Committee. Okay. And from there, everything I've been like, trying to chase is related to sports nutrition. Um, so let's jump into nutrition. What, what are your views on diets? Diets for athletes in general, right? But just on people who are working out, people who are exercising, people who are trying to lose weight and optimize their performance in the gym. What are your views? You know, there's the keto and the Mediterranean and you know, just these diets that come along. What's your opinion on that? Um, okay, so I think first, like it, it's very funny because in general speaking, diet is something that we all follow. We oh, all have a diet in general, right. mm -hmm. but when we think of diets, as, as you mentioned, keto and intermittent fasting mm -hmm. and all these things, like there's a million out there. I find it a bit co confronting because most of them come with the idea that the best thing you can do is lose weight. And that's why this diet is good for you because we all should be losing weight and we should all looking to shrink our bodies. Mm -hmm. And that's where I disagree. Once, once you put that filter onto something, it is really hard to not seeing as sacrifice, as punishment and something wrong with you. That's and that's why I find it very conflicting. And at the end, a lot of them actually go against what you would call nature or the standard. Like if you right. think of keto, mm -hmm. you are essentially removing a whole food group that is essential for your body. You That's need right. carbohydrates. That's right. Or intermittent fasting, like when you need to restrict certain hours when it's like, oh, well, actually that's when you're awake. In theory, you should be eating then. Refueling so, as you go throughout the day. Exactly. Uh, so I find that it's a little bit hard when you think of all these diets. And if any of those could work, we all will be following that one. Uh, but then there's this trend, actually it's very funny because keto was so popular 20 years ago and then it stopped. It was like, oh no, 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 the problem is fat now. So we focus on fat mm -hmm. and now we're back to the problem are carbs. So now we're focused on carbs. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure like fat will come back and we'll keep cycling through these things right. with a new name, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's still going to be the same thing. Right. And, and like you say, a lot of these diets are so, um, centered around losing weight and, and losing weight should not be your ultimate goal. We're talking about overall health and especially in what you do with athletes in general, there's so much more that goes into it. Mental health, you know, resting and, you know, you know, just getting not, not only your body, right. But getting your mind, right. It starts up here for, for an athlete. I would imagine for a triathlete more so than anybody else. Right. Yes, and especially considering that there's so much effort required, there's so many like, hours of training that need to get involved and restricting your energy intake is not going to help. That's if right. you think of most people, especially if they are at a higher level, they are training twice a day and they need a lot of energy. And then you are telling them that, let's say, I mean, you, we just keep to us an example, like, oh, you, you shouldn't be eating carbs. But then the other one is, oh, the fasting. So you actually have a training session at 6 p.m., but you shouldn't eat anything because it's already after your window. Mm. So how is that going to fit? Right. And that's when we need to, to consider that you that that food is there to also fuel your workout, to fuel, to give you that energy that you need. Mm. 
it's not there just because it's something that has right. to happen. It, 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 <laughs> right, make yourself feel good or for your taste buds or whatever. It's the energy you need to help with your performance. So let's kind of switch gears a, a, a little bit here, Gabby. Um, Plant-based diet, veganism. Um, you know, there's in in the um, I guess in the sports world, it's it, you know it could be like a touchy subject, you know, because you know we need protein and you know you know carbohydrates, you know the mix of carbohydrates or you know whatever. Um, what is your opinion on? ultra athletes you know these people who are marathoners and and triathletes like yourself um what's your opinion on on veganism or having a mainly plant-based diet um in order to to optimize your performance i think it's something it's it's not something i practice but it's not something i'm against uh mm -hmm. of people doing it i believe that because there is such a uh this essentially what they are like because they are removing animal products it doesn't mean that they are removing all the essential nutrients that they need there are certain vitamins that it's impossible to 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 get from uh if, if from food if you are restricting your animal source intake so that's when you are thinking of like all right let's let's consider a supplementation here but most of the other things are able to to achieve so I usually recommend definitely go and speak with a specialist because we need to make sure that you are balancing things in the right way because it's not as i guess the foundation is all right i'm just going to remove all animal products talking about someone who is vegan so 100 removing everything cheese dairy meat right. everything is restricted um, and it's not as simple as like i'm just going to avoid that it's like yes you need to avoid that but how are you going to balance your meals in a way that you're still getting all the nutrients mm. you need so you when we think yep. with exactly so how are we going to make sure that that protein intake is still there that your vitamins and minerals are still present mm -hmm. and if for some reason it is impossible to achieve it through food how are we going to supplement to make sure that you are still having all those things mm -hmm. and in the case of an ultra uh, endurance athletes or ultra distance runners as well as you mentioned um, it is actually not that hard because since the carbohydrate intake is so high like the demand is is so high is from a plant-based diet it's not hard to achieve it mm -hmm. uh it's actually easy because most of the things that come with protein also come with carbohydrate so that's possible to to get to a nice balance for for these athletes as well right. and in theory we all should most of us are like us who eat meat as well a lot of the time we're eating more meat than we need to we should so if we all could reduce our meat intake somehow that would be very beneficial for us and for the planet yes Yes, I, I totally agree with you. Another important thing that anyone who's listening could take away from this. I, I myself, I, I don't practice, I'm a pescatarian. I don't practice veganism. Um, and I'm probably more vegan than most vegans. Because <laughs> on most days I am, you know, completely plant-based and I throw in, you know, seafood um, here or there. But, you know, the point I'm trying to make is there's another important thing that for those of you who are listening to this conversation to take away, having a mainly plant-based diet is just so good for your overall health. And it's also, you know, great for your plant, uh, uh, for our planet. Um, you know, fiber, if there's, if there sh sh should be a superfood, I just think fiber, I know, you know, I know it's not a nutrient, but I just think fiber should be a superfood. There's just so many great health benefits from um, fiber. But let's talk about macronutrients, right? And um, your protein, your carbohydrates, um, and your fats. But we're gonna focus on carbohydrates a little bit because you mentioned something that I think, um, you said the demand for carbs are so high with these ultra runners, ultra marathoners. And it's really, it's it should be most the higher percent of our caloric intake as humans in, in general, a little bit more than fat and proteins, right? So what is what do you, how do you guide your athletes and what's your opinion on carbohydrates being that carbs get such a bad rep and people don't really educate themselves on carbohydrates you know as much yes so i try and make sure that they are having carbs throughout the day which is probably like very i wouldn't say standard but that's the basic is ensuring that uh their day has the carbohydrates it doesn't mean because a lot of people think like oh carbs and they are immediately sugar that that's all that carbs mean but we're talking about pasta, we're talking about rice, we're talking about fruit. All these things 
are carb, uh, carbohydrates, and they are good for you. So it's making sure that they are there. So, so foods that are like healthy fats, um, you know, when I think about stuff like that is healthy fats, I think about stuff like nuts and seeds and uh, avocados and stuff like that. I mean, what are some healthy fats that you recommend, you know, for your client? Because another, fats get a bad rep too. You know, people, oh, I got to stay away from, you know, meat and this and that or, you know, whatever. You know, what are some healthy fats that you would recommend being a nutritionist? Yes. So essentially the ones you mentioned, like nuts, they are really good. The seeds, avocado, olive oil, all these things are really good for you as well. And the way I recommend them is having them across the day is also very important. So for example, often if you're having a snack, let's say it's not because you're going to the gym or anything, you just feel hungry. I recommend having a piece of fruit with some nuts. Oh. Why? Because that way it also supports one, your intake and the other one, that piece of fruit is going to reduce the absorption so you feel satisfied for longer. So I don't know if it has happened to you, but sometimes you have a fruit and like three minutes later, you're already, I'm hungry. Yeah. But if you have a some notes, nuts with it, it's very easy, it's easier for you to feel uh, satisfied because that, that fat is also helping with the absorption and it's also adding nutrients that you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I eat my nuts, you know, that would be a snack one day and then maybe another day I'll eat my apples. But on the days when I have my nuts, I feel more satisfied for longer. And on the days when I have my apples, I'm starving two minutes later. So that's a good point. I'll split it up. Yes, <laughs> yeah, just, just, just put them together. Because <laughs> I didn't realize that the, the fat helps the carbohydrates, um, you know, to absorb. That is something I did not know. So thank you for that, that I did not know that. Yeah, and I guess yeah. that's why we're supposed to have our diet balanced on our plate. The fats, the carbohydrates, and the protein, because they all work together, correct? Yes, essentially. So, for example, in this case with the app, like the fruit, what we want to do is reduce that absorption. It's not something that is happening so quickly. Oh. It's often, for example, with the glycemic index, if you, add, if you have something that is sort of high in, in sugar and you add a fat, it actually reduces that yeah. absorption. So that's why it like, reduces also the, the index there. Um, but yes, essentially, just as, as you said, they help each other and they help your body as well. Um, each of them have a role to play. And if your body has them all, it's easier to become more efficient because all the things that are required, because oh, the, the body is very clever. Like if it's lacking a nutrient, it's going to put things in there in place. So that way to sort of balance for that nutrient not being there. But it comes to a cost. It's, is costing you things that are not as good somewhere else. So it could be that, for example, if you are not eating carbs, your protein intake is what is putting up with that um, uh, energy. And so that way it's converting those things into ketones. That's why it's keto diet, because your body is creating those right. sort of addition, like different energy things. Mm -hmm. The thing is that it's costing your body and it's putting your body at a stress. Oh that is not necessary it is the carbs are right there you can just eat them right. and that will help your body and that will add that balance then just like you said when we first started it's almost going against science and biology right because your body wants to pull from that carbohydrate that's how we were made right so when you when you work out your body wants to initially pull from that carbohydrate but it's almost like you're tricking it to say no don't pull from that carbohydrate i know that's what you're supposed to do let me create these ketones for you to pull from so it's almost like you're going against science and biology making your body do all these extra work when it really doesn't have to be that way exactly yeah 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 so post-workout so we talk about pre-workout i'm going out for this long run you know, I wake up in the morning and I haven't had breakfast, so, you know, I'm going to have my piece of fruit and I'm going to have a bar and I'm going to be good to go after, you know, my half marathon because that's all I run. I haven't made it to a marathon yet. One day I will. I'm not going to do no triathlon like you, but. <laughs> so we talk about pre Yeah, that is fantastic. <laughs> Post-workout, right? So everyone is so big on this protein. Protein, you have to have it after you work out. They start, you know, putting all this protein powder and drinking it and all this stuff. What is your recommendation for post-workout? So even like after the gym, after an hour workout, or someone like myself, I go out for, you know, six mile run. What's your recommendation for post-workout? My recommendation, yes, it is protein and carbohydrate. And the thing is that protein doesn't have to come from a powder. That's very important to know. Protein can come, for example, let's say you go to the gym in the evening. So you have 
your uh, gym workout and you come home and you have dinner. That is your post-workout. You have a, a high protein intake, you have your carbohydrate there, you have, so that is helping with that post-workout recovery. My, I think the main recommendation is trying to eat as soon as you can after your training session. Sometimes the, a meal won't be that immediate. So it will be like, I don't know, you, you go to your run and then you have a nice breakfast. Sometimes it's not going to be the case because it was at a different time. So that's when we are like, all right, let's put a snack or a different meal there that is exclusively a post, like it has a post work of function exclusively. Mm -hmm. So for example, let's say that run in the morning. All right, we need protein. Okay, you can have milk or you can have the protein powder, or you can have a Greek yogurt, or you can have some eggs, mm. that is protein. You need the carbohydrate, all right, let's go to put a, a piece of fruit there, or you can add oats, or you can have a piece of bread, so that way you have the carb there as well. And you can add different things as well. For flavor, you can add some like, I don't know, nuts and peanut butter, or the things that are also enhancing the way it tastes, because it doesn't have to be, sometimes we're very literal, and it's like, no, no, no. So it's going to be eggs and a piece of fruit and that's it because it's carbs and protein. Yeah. And no, you can make it nice. There's no, nothing wrong with it. Right. So in, as I said, first it will be timing, making sure that is, it's not something that is like critical that you like a step out of the gym and you're already eating, mm -hmm. but trying if you can as much as possible within the first hour after you finish your training session mm -hmm. is going to be very beneficial. So that's, I probably would say that would be the first one, eat something as soon as <laughs> within you the first hour. The right. second one would be adding the carbohydrate and the protein, like second and third, I guess, like those things being present are going to be very helpful. Awesome. And the other thing I, I, I forgot to mention is hydration. A lot of the times we forget, we also need to be, drink water. That's really important as well. That is true. And then, so what about, you know, el electrolytes? You know, we talk about drinking water and we focus on, you know, that's, that's so much. Like, what's the importance of electrolytes? You know, those sodium and magnesium and, and, and potassium, right? You know, most ultra athletes may understand that. You know, regular people who go to the gym and work out every day or go out even just for a run outside don't, may not understand. What is the importance of electrolytes in the body? Yes, so those electrolytes are essentially the things that are making that uh, that fluid to work, I guess. So it's like, yes, we need water, but often because the water comes with those electrolytes. And when we sweat, we're losing them. So often that salt, when you see on your sweat, is those electrolytes like getting, uh, get, like not being there in your body anymore. Yeah. Yes. So we need to replenish them. Often it's easy when you do it through food. Like for example, we put salt on our food and we have our food has potassium, potassium and magnesium. But for someone who is doing a longer uh, training session when they are not actually eating, they will be beneficial. It will be beneficial to have those electrolytes included as well. Sometimes you can have them in a in the form of a tablet. So you can just add it to your water and that way is having those electrolytes as well. Sometimes just simply having a sports drink, most of them come with the carbohydrate, which is like the sugar essentially, and these electrolytes as well. Mm -hmm. um, but for most of us, if we're doing one hour session, probably not necessary to stress too much about them, unless you are someone who sweats a lot. If you are losing at least one liter of water through sweat, I would say definitely first rehydrate, if possible, drink water while you are training. And if you can add those electrolytes to it, that will, that would support that fluid retention a little bit more. So it's likely your sweat won't be as much. And that way you like staying hydrated is going to help your body as well. Got it. So someone who sweats a lot would lose a lot more electrolytes versus, like, versus someone who does not. So do we lose electrolytes um, when we pee as well or mainly during sweat? No, uh, pee, sweat, it, and even when you breathe, like you can also, uh, got yeah, it, got it, got keep it. losing them. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. This is, this has been a great conversation. I mean, I've learned a few things from you, so thank you so very much. But I have one question for you, and this is more personal. I'm always hungry. 
why am I always hungry, Gabby? <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking, I don't know if it's because of my diet. <laughs> and I pride myself in, you know, saying that when I say I do eat and I think I have a pretty balanced diet and I think I have a high carbohydrate diet, but I eat in a couple hours, I'm hungry. I just stay hungry. You know what I mean? Do you have like some of your athletes who may experience that? Yes, and actually it's very funny you mentioned that because right here, and I'm going to read it because for people who are listening, well, I have this mug, the Never Not Hungry Club. A friend Never gave it to me because hungry sounds, club. <laughs> sounds like you need one of these, Pita, as well. This looks like oh, we're in the same club. <laughs> oh my god, girl. I do. Never not hungry club. I don't when I'm not hungry, I'm thinking. Well, I'm either hungry or thinking about what I'm going to eat. You know what I mean? Even when I'm full, I'm thinking about what my next meal is going to be. Like I'm all food is always on my mind. <laughs> I think there are several things involved there. One is probably that you are so aware of nutrition that is part of like, cause it happens to me a, a lot as well. It's, if I'm going somewhere, I'm already worrying about whether it's going to be a break for snacks or whether what they are going to supply lunch. Because for me, it's something that is so important and I, I need to be on top of that. I, I need to be aware of these things to know if I need to bring something with me or if I should eat beforehand. All these things that maybe not a lot of people are considering, I am asking about. So I feel like in your case, it could be the same because you are so aware of your nutrition. That is something that you are already planning. That's one. The other one is also knowing that being hungry is okay as long as it's something that is happening uh i don't know three hours after your meal if it's happening so close to your previous meal maybe we need to assess whether that meal was enough mm -hmm. so if your meal wasn't not was not big enough and you actually feel like i finished that that i'm supposed to eat because that's what this diet or this right. guideline is telling me that I should be having, but I actually finish and I'm still yeah. hungry. There's no diets there. I'm just, mm -mm, I don't do those. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. But sometimes like we have, we start putting these like unconscious rules. Like we think it's like, oh, this yeah. plate is what I need. True. But True. then you finish the plate. You and if, if you are still hungry, then it's likely you still need more. Mm. That your body is telling you that food is required there. But if it's something that is happening after three hours, I would say, like, all right, let's just have a snack or let's just have something else. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not, for example, going to bed and still feeling hungry, mm -hmm. I would say there's nothing wrong there. Uh, as, and also listen to your body if you're hungry. Sometimes as well, it's also important to consider because I hate that like, oh, maybe drink water to see because you could be thirsty. It's, I think it's quite distinct when we are either hungry or I'm thirsty. And I know when I'm thirsty. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like if, if you are anything like me, everybody knows when you're hungry. <laughs> everybody knows when I'm hungry, Gabby. Yes, ma'am. I think we're probably the same. So I think I'm okay then. Because I drink a lot of water as well. So, you know, I don't really get that feel of thirst. I drink water and I never really feel thirst, but I, and I don't go to bed hungry. So I mean, I think I'm okay. Yeah, I think I'm okay. But you know, because society just puts so much stress on food and not feeling hungry and I don't go to bed hungry. When I'm hungry, I eat something and it's usually around three hours or so. And when I eat, I eat till when I'm satisfied, you know? And if I'm hungry after I eat, I may go for, you know, a little bit more so. Um, you know, just, just checking as long as I'm in, in, you know, uh, we're, we're on the same page. So I think we're good then. <laughs> no, that is fantastic. But I'm very happy you are asking because a lot of people actually think that being hungry is wrong. And, and I love that you appreciate, no, if I'm hungry, I'm going to eat, which is fantastic. That's so important, mm -hmm. but it's so interesting how there are like, uh, these hunger suppressants. And if you, for example, I've seen people putting it in, into uh, in perspective when you say, all right, uh, I don't want to pee. So I actually feel like I need to pee, but I'm going to hold it because peeing is bad. And it's like, and, and once you think of it, it's so, and I'm going to take these tablets to stop me from peeing. Stop it sounds so ridiculous. And we, and if we think of it for being hungry, it sounds normal. It's like, oh no, no, I'm hungry, but I need to do something to resist the hunger without eating. Ooh. Or I'm going to take a tab, a pill. So I don't, don't feel hungry that often. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, your body is telling you that you need food. You need it's energy. something that you need to listen to right yeah and i love to pee because i know it helps my kidney so exactly <laughs> and i want to see the, the same. color of it because it's going to tell me if i'm hydrated or not so 
Well, thank yes. you so very much for this conversation, Gabby. I totally, totally appreciate it. You know, hopefully the people who are listening to this can, you know, take a thing or two, you know, from this conversation, whether it's someone who's the marathoner, triathlete, you know, ultra runner, you know, you would have learned something nutrition you know we can use nutrition to optimize our performance not only in the gym but in the kitchen and on the plate they go hand in hand right gabby yes that's right i always say optimizing performance in a sport and life that's where nutrition can play a crucial role which is that's everywhere right so that's right in the sport sport and and in life so tell us where can we find you i know the name of your company is intense eat fit.com that's the name of your website so tell us where we can find you you know on social media and you know a little bit about your website and so forth sure so yeah uh, happy for people to uh, visit my website there's a, a contact form there you can uh, message me through there I actually have a scorecard there it's a 30 30 question uh, 30 questions to assess whether you are fueling your days right or not it gives you a score afterwards so i like it's for free anybody can go and complete it if you if you would like to uh, and that's on the website intensitefit.com and if you want to have a chat with me or just connect with me social media usually instagram is where i'm the most active so it's at intensitefit on uh, instagram that you can find me otherwise facebook i'm also there intensitefit by gabby villa uh, it's how you can find me on facebook so, um, so you said on your website, you have a thing you can fill out to see if you're fueling your day properly. So if you're eating yes. enough, is that, um, essentially what that is? Yes, that's right. So it's, it's, it's a questionnaire and you, it's essentially like a quiz. So mm -hmm. you complete the questionnaire and at the end, it gives you a score on how you are fueling your days. It does have questions targeted at people who are competing as well. So some of the questions are, uh, do you eat during your races or what do you carry with you and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, but, but still, I would still very encourage people to, to go and complete it because it, it gives you good feedback as well. After you get your score, it assesses you against four different areas and each area tells you uh, some recommendations based on your score as well. Okay. That's a cool idea. That is a cool idea. I think a lot of people could use that. I think that's something that would be helpful for a lot of people, whether you are an athlete or not. Because when we're done here, I'm going to go ahead and check it out myself because I want to know if I'm fueling my, my day properly. <laughs> you know, even though I'm in nutrition, you know, it's always good to kind of, you know, help just to see, you know, where you're at. You know, we don't, none of us know, know it all. Um, but the name of the, her website is Intense Eat Fit com, And that's how you guys can find her on um, Facebook and on Instagram and on the website and for those of you who um, want to watch this video and see our beautiful faces we are recording for YouTube as well so you guys can check us out there <laughs> um, but until next time you guys thank you Gabby thank you so very much for taking your morning out all the way across the world in Australia um, to have this conversation with us today Thank you very much, Peter. It was a pleasure. I really enjoy our chat. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, guys. And thank you guys one more time for joining us again. My name is Peter Gay Barrett. It's at Barrett Fitness. And I'm available on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, all of them. Go ahead and, you know, check me out. I don't have any cool um, thing you can fill out like Gabby, but she does. And you can hop on over to her website and see if you are fueling your day properly. Once again, Gabby, thank you so very much for this conversation. Until next time, Gabby and I, we are out. <laughs>